Donna Forlano from Free Speech TV. We are here in Denver, Colorado at the National Conference for Media Reform. I'm here with John Nichols of The Nation and also the co-founder of Free Press. John, thanks for being here. It's great to be with Free Speech TV it and is, you. Thank yeah. you. It's great to be with you as well. Now, you've been interviewed here before, so I want to ask you a little bit about mm -hmm. The forthcoming documentary about the Wisconsin uprising. Sure. Uh, well, there's a, there have been quite a few documentaries about the Wisconsin uprising. It's pretty fascinating that um, uh, this moment in our history got so much attention and that people wanted to produce something uh, that went deeper than just the news reports on it. Uh, and so a lot of documentary filmmakers have focused in on it. We've got uh, a couple of even that have been already come out, some more that will be coming. And the... Why, why did that happen? I mean, I think that's, an, that's kind of a core question for a conference like this. I think it's because there's an awfully lot of people who feel that the story of the Wisconsin uprising was not well told by mainstream media. What do you think was missing? I think there's an awful lot missing. You know, my sense is that the stories of working people, uh, when they are rising up and objecting to things that are being done to them, uh, are told terribly by most of our media. It's usually uh, suggested that the working people have somehow gotten in the way mm. of power, mm -hmm. or they've gotten in the way How of... dare they? Exactly, <laughs> that's exactly right. And so there's a very dismissive character to it. There's also a suggestion in an immense amount of our media that social protest is somehow un-American. Mm as if they've forgotten that the First Amendment of the Constitution says you have a right to assemble and petition for the redress of grievances. We became American via social protest. It's got a pretty, pretty big we one. We became America. Yeah, and so, I, I mean, I think that people really do want to reconnect with that and tell that story uh, in a positive way, not just in the dismissive way that so much of our media does. And so it should be no surprise that at a conference like this, you're seeing a lot of folks uh, who are working in the area of documentary film and including uh, some of the folks who are doing stuff on Wisconsin. And I will tell you also that the Wisconsin uprising captured so many people's imagination uh, because uh, we had just come off the 2010 election, which was a big Tea Party election. There was a, a sense that the right was very much on the march and that it was dominant. And what Wisconsin showed is, no, there are hundreds of thousands of people who are willing to go into the streets to occupy their capital to stand up for what are very progressive values. What is happening now in Wisconsin in terms of that movement? Well, it's actually quite exciting. Uh, you know, movement building is uh, not about an event. It's about creating something that's gonna last over a long period of time. And if we're honest with ourselves, any successful movement is going to have victories and defeats. Correct. Right? right. You're not gonna, sure. it's not gonna, you know, just have a, a win and go away. Mm -hmm. uh, it's actually the defeats that often define a movement. And so in Wisconsin, obviously there were setbacks. There were, no, there were points, they tried to recall Scott Walker, the governor, it didn't work. Mm -hmm. uh, it but almost worked. It came pretty close. <laughs> they flipped the legislature, which was very important. Uh, protected the state from a right to work law, protected the state from voter ID laws, the courts have intervened. And this is the important thing about Wisconsin. It really is understood as an ongoing struggle that will last for perhaps many years. And uh, the recent news is quite fascinating. First, the courts have blocked uh, some of the governor's anti-labor laws, that's a big deal. Uh, more importantly, in the fall of 2012, a person who was central to the movement, very, very active in it, Tammy Baldwin, congressman from the Madison area, who was on the floor of the Capitol with those who slept in night after night and refused to leave, refused to back down to the governor, she was elected United States Senator. Mm. It's not, not often that somebody who's coming out of the protest, you know, fist in the air, goes to the U.S. Senate. Similarly, just uh, about a week or so ago, we had the election for state superintendent of public instruction and a statewide election. And one candidate was supporting the governor's agenda, vouchers for schools, cuts to public education. The other candidate militantly opposed. The supporter of public education, uh, who was totally at odds with the governor's position, won 61% of the vote. Big victory. Wow. And so what we see is a movement that uh, can compete electorally, can also compete in the courts and make, you know, have victories there, and is still on the streets. There are still big protests. Uh, so we're here at the National Conference for Media Reform. We're talking about uh, independent media. What do you think is the role of independent media was in that Wisconsin uprising oh. and continue, what what yeah. is the continued role there? The role of independent media was huge in the Wisconsin uprising. It was probably as important as it's ever been. Uh, and not because, you know, Wisconsin was the most important thing or something like that, but independent media is an evolving reality and it gets better and better. 
I was in Seattle at the NIWTO protests of 1999. Independent media was a huge part of that, but um, when you look at where it was technically at that point, it was very, very limited. You basically went out, saw stuff, and put a blog up, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Now, mm -hmm. um, it's in real time. It is in real time. You have Twitter, you have Facebook, and this both of those. This entire conference is being being uh, is on air right now via Free Speech TV. And Free Speech TV, which did a lot on Wisconsin, did a lot on the Michigan fight, a lot on the Ohio fight. You know, it's independent media is better than major media in this country at going into state-based struggles, looking at what people are doing on the ground and telling it. There's a little more time sometimes, and that immediacy, also just some of the commitments, some of the values of independent media work better. And so in Wisconsin, what I suggested, I wrote a book about it called Uprising, and, and I suggested that what developed in Wisconsin was very, very significant for independent media, and it was a next media system. We've had a long debate in this country about new media and old media. Mm -hmm. The idea that, you know, there's new media, it's it's uh, digital, it's it's faster, it's some video, uh, but it's not the old crotchety newspaper, radio, mm -hmm. TV. Um, that debate's a silly one. What happened in Wisconsin was you saw blowing all those barriers out and a next media system that used television at times. Amy Goodman was mm -hmm. out there doing sure. radio reports and broadcasts. Ed Schultz from MSNBC broadcast right. live from there. And so you had some old media, you had newspapers on the ground, uh, Capital Times in Madison, a progressive daily that backed the uprising. Mm -hmm. uh, national magazines like The Nation that wrote about it, paid attention. But then at the same time, the real driving force in many cases was, you know, a mom at home updating her Facebook page. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, a kid out there, you know, putting out a tweet. And um, people- So it's this idea that everyone can contribute no matter what level. Absolutely, documentary filmmaker coming in and, you know, capturing all this. And that's what I mean by a next media system, where we stop worrying about, you know, what platform we're living on. And we start saying, all of these things matter, right? The, the radio broadcast matters. The tweet matters, the Facebook posting matters, the free speech TV broadcast matters, the documentary film made by our friend Sam Mayfield matters. All of these things come together and they create a synergy that we've never had before. Now, Wisconsin didn't win everything, mm -hmm. but you saw it in play there. You saw it again in play with Occupy at a next level there. And, and these small movements that grew into great big things that captured the imagination of the world. I think that we are probably in, you know, if we're, if we're talking about the realization of what the potential is for the media technologies that we're developing, maybe we're three, four, five percent of the way. Wow. Big things are going to happen. Wow. And our challenge as citizens is to make sure that we keep every platform we can open and free and usable by the great mass of people. Uh, make it possible to do independent media, make it possible to use all of these different mediums. Don't let them be colonized by mon money mm -hmm. and power. Keep them open and free. So if you want to be a media reform activist who feeds broader activism, right, your battle, or our battle, is to make sure that we don't let anybody uh, kind of put constraints or limits on how we use our new technologies. We lost control of television for the right. people. Sure. We've lost radio in some cases. We've almost the lost the government. We've lost a lot. <laughs> uh, but now we know that sometimes we have to battle to keep things open and free and available to the people. And if we take that lesson away, our potential is immense. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you. I'm Juliana Forlano. You're watching Free Speech TV.